Good evening folks, uh, once again delving into my treasure trove of technological tat. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought I'd show you a couple of interesting things this evening. Um, you will all be familiar with the GPS system, the Global Positioning System. Uh, you probably get sat nav in your car or uh, you use uh, you know, a smartphone to, to use your sat nav or to find the location of your nearest restaurant, etc, etc. Um, but it wasn't always as, as easy um, as just picking up your smartphone and you know speaking to your phone or whatever. Um, if you wanted to use GPS uh, back in the day, you had to have a, a dedicated um, system for that. And I was going to show you, uh, or I'm going to show you, uh, a couple this evening. So we're going to do it in sort of reverse order. So you've seen this at a modern smartphone. Obviously, I've not shown you any uh, actual examples. Um, but yeah, so we're going back in date order now. So we're now going to go back to 1996. Uh, and this is the Magellan GPS 2000 satellite receiver. And this is quite a robust uh, GPS unit. Um, it's really quite heavy. Uh, it's probably about... 200 grams maybe 300 grams in weight um, waterproof of course because uh, these were designed to be taken out in the hills by people orienteering or um, you know whatever people out in the ground uh, on military operations that type of thing um, but I'll just turn this one on I'm, I'm not going to go through details uh, go through you know finer details of everything uh, but yeah 1996 I'm um, just coming up my position there uh, case big brother's watching but yeah so yeah mono um what do you call it lcd display and uh you know it, it functions and this one does still function and works absolutely perfectly but of course it's it has to all be done using this rubberized keypad there's nothing you can't just type in a position or uh anything like that it's all through manually you know going through to that number press and write yeah, scroll to the next number, scroll to the next number, scroll to the next number, etc, etc. So yeah, so that's, uh, I suppose we could say a more modern, uh, or one of the modern uh, GPS units in the past few years. So that one's, uh, yeah. Was that 20 years old, is it? Yeah. Um, but the one I thought would be quite interesting to you, and we're going to tear it down as well is this bad boy and this is the uh, Magellan uh, GPS 1000 M now the M as far as I can tell uh, is the military version and this is an ex-military GPS unit and it is absolutely humongous if I just use this pound coin here for a bit of scale you, you will see uh, just how big it is it's big in every dimension um, and when you extend the antenna that just uh, makes it even bigger so there's my hands next to it <laughs> so it's absolutely huge and the thing I suppose that makes this one famous is uh, this is the exact same unit um, or not the exact same unit but the exact same model of unit the the uh, ill-fated Bravo 2 Zero Patrol in the first Gulf War uh, had such an issue trying to get to work and it is really difficult to get to work um, for one reason which I'll, I'll come on to in a second but we'll have a look around this device um, first um, so it's again it's ruggerized ruggerized that word it's rugged yeah uh, it's got uh, rubber protection all around it and seals to cover um you know sockets for the power i think this is a multi-purpose socket for uh data as well as uh power um and that's pretty much uh all that's on it the the antenna um is, is adjustable and this would point straight up to the sky so of course if you're holding it along walking you'd have it so angled towards you so you could see the screen but the antenna would be vertical um if it was lying flat down clearly you'd adjust it up that way <coughs> um on the back um you can see there you go Magellan gps nav at uh, 1000m and it is copyright 1989 Magellan Systems Corporation uh, Monrovia California 
Um, however, this it does appear that this is made in the UK, though. So the, the actual item itself was made in the UK. Um, and we can see it's ex-military because we can see it was inspected on the 28th of January 1993 by the Stores Inspection Branch, Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineers. So yeah, it's, it's let's see, absolutely huge and it is heavy, probably getting on for a kilo. Uh, so we'll turn it on, I know the batteries are pretty much flat on this. Uh, memory loss, press initialization. Uh, choose time, yeah, display, okay. There's uh, our enter button. Enter the time, so we 21.52. And we're on the 5th of August, uh, 16. Approximate position. Now, it asks us to put an approximate position, and that uses a, a military so a grid reference system. So I don't actually have that position to put in. So I can't really take it any further uh, than that. Um, even if I could, and I said there was an issue, uh, this is one of the very, if not the only, uh, piece of kit I've ever had that is not Y2K compliant. Uh, for younger viewers, um, Y2K or year 2000 uh, was an issue with some pieces of equipment where by uh, the very last day in 1999, uh, older technology they hadn't programmed into the software because when it got to 1999, it basically couldn't trip over to the year 2000 and basically the, the system stopped working and uh, this is the issue with this um, I can get it past this, I have put in a, a reference before um, but yeah, it just won't pick up the satellites uh, purely because of that year 2000 issue so yeah, fairly robust, fairly heavy um, I suppose now we'll just take it apart okay, so to take the uh, battery compartment off it's just a case of sliding it forward uh, most modern uh, GPS, uh, handheld GPS, and you still do get uh, handheld GPS use, uh, handheld GPS units. Um, but it's not always smartphone nowadays. You can buy an off-the-shelf, you know, much like the the smaller Magellan, but just in a smaller um, form factor, normally with a colour screen, etc. Uh, Garmin makes some as well. So this still has. The uh, military batteries in it as well, the good old Vata with the uh, military broad arrow on them. There we go. And that's just a 6 AA uh, battery pack. So you can take that out or you could have one spare already, um, you know, populated with batteries. And if you were running low, you just take it off and put it back in. Uh, we can see from the date code that this was made in the 51st week of 1990. So currently, you know, around 26 years old, this one. Um, yeah, so a fair age. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, get in about it and see what's inside. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there is a, a waterproof seal in this area, so I'd, we may be able to open this up. It may be that it is uh, essentially glued together uh, to to meet the requirements of the, the waterproofing. Um, this was also available um, as a um, civilian version. Um, you can basically get this almost identical, except it's in a white white casing, um, and that was more for use, uh, or more for the use of sailors essentially. Um, GPS system um, was designed by the military. It's for for the military and still is purely for the military. However, the um, the satellites. I transmit on basically two frequencies essentially one let's say is the military use and one's for civilian use and the US government still retain the right to to switch off that civilian uh, side of the the positioning system uh, during times of war uh, if needs be
but the whole point you get it now for free uh, or not for free because it was never intended for use by civilians um, but there was a Korean airliner uh, shot down in Soviet airspace in the early 80s and uh, President Ronald Reagan at the time basically said right I'm not having this um, we're going to make it uh, make it available to civilians for their use so to prevent that happening again basically the airliner had uh, strayed into Soviet airspace and was shot down uh, with a loss of uh, almost 300 lives I think it was but you can google all that and uh, if, if you want to find out further information on that uh, the civil uh, civilian side as well uh, up until I think the year 2000 had a, an error built in as well so that regardless of how accurate your equipment was there was always a, an error um, so input into your position by up to 100 metres it was a random figure um, but whatever position uh, you were standing in it would be only accurate to 100 metres where nowadays I think it's down about 5 or 10 metres something like that so it's much much more accurate nowadays so we're nearly in And you just know, because this is a piece of military kit, that it's going to be good quality inside. Not like nowadays, where we don't throw enough money to, into the defence budget. But, okay, here we go. Right, so, what have we got so far? Um, we have got... Uh, Obviously the uh, back panel with the power coming in um, and a socket on this side which does look indeed look it's going to carry data uh, and in fact that looks like a standard yep so there's a antenna off this is a gunky grease in there obviously to, to for water resistance uh, I won't tear this down I'll keep that as it is and then, yeah, that just fits onto a sort of, I don't know what kind of connector is, I can never remember, SME or MXC, or I can't remember the name of them, but. And hopefully, I can't see, but this, in fact, is it just all going to lift out? Yeah. Hopefully, there's a, oh yeah, there's a connector there. Right, so yeah, that's a back panel. As you can see, it's metalised inside, uh, obviously to protect for interference, and um, there's some reinforcing on there for the where the straps would fit in. Uh, antenna we've just disconnected inside the front cover. Again, we've got this metalised plastic. It's quite hard to see, well, you see it there reflecting, and then with standards. Uh, um, rubber keypad with a set of carbon pads which make contact with the, the buttons there or the, the contacts there. Uh, this is uh, sealed in again uh, we don't want water getting in there and, and getting into the electronics so that is actually sealed around the edge to prevent that. And then on to the uh, issue itself I don't know if you can hear that rattling but I'm presuming that inside here there's possibly some sort of desiccant to absorb any moisture that does make its way in. Uh, so it looks like the boards are sandwiched. In fact, no. There, yeah. It looks like the boards are just sandwiched together with uh, pins. So. <clears throat> and there we go. So that's the. This is the sort of. Uh, this is the keypad and the display. And clearly, these are going to be drivers for the displays. Um, and yeah, we've got some desiccant. Yeah, so that's just going to absorb any any moisture uh, that comes in. Cool. All right. Um, is this going to take down any further? Yes, it is. Okay, so now 
at this side so this is the, the main to electronics um, of it um, so yep as you can see the board's got a conformal coating on it to prevent uh, water damage in fact it might not be actually this might just be a shiny PCB because it doesn't look to be anything on this side but yeah we've got a small piezo buzzer a um, couple of super caps I think those are just to retain information um, is that a 5 volt regulator? not sure um, uh, obviously a firmware on these EPROMs a uh, bit of memory and um, yeah, the actual GPS a processing uh, software itself, a you know package with the the required sort of firmware on there that's going to do that for us. Um, don't know what those are. Those are look like sort of precision resistors or something like that. They've got the glass, you know, glass that are fronted. Again, uh, basically just a few passive components, a couple of diodes here and there and, and that's pretty much it. Okay, and on to the final part, that's just uh, obviously a bit of uh, insulation. I'll just remember how this all goes together. So that goes in there like so. And then this is that show uh, the receiver itself and this is the actual antenna uh, so we've got the, well, the antenna coming in here and then basically under here will be it's obviously secured on with uh, cans that are soldered on so I'm not going to tear this down but yeah there'll be uh, the antenna secretary underneath that uh, Murata era which is obviously the Republic of Ireland um, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so I think back in the day this was a, a fairly good unit, but quite difficult to operate if you hadn't been properly trained. Um, like I say, you can't... I mean, I, I struggled, um, you know, to find out the, the referencing system, etc. Um, and it was purely just because I had uh, some internet access that I found... Um, a brief, um, what do you call it, field card for it. Um, so yeah, I think like the the Bravo Two Zero situation. You know, if you're not um, if you're not got all the details how to program etc. Yeah, you're gonna have trouble. And this had to be turned on within three hundred miles of its uh, sort of first uh, location, so that we'd pick up the satellites quickly. Um, otherwise, it would search for hours and hours to to find it. Uh, it'll set me a long time anyway guys thought you found that interesting and um, if you did give us a thumbs up and uh, i'll see you soon for another video take care bye bye